Hello, this is Adam Horton, and welcome to my video tutorial on how to play and how to teach Power Grid, the board game. So this video is intended to introduce a new player to the game, but also to give experienced players a little more of an idea of a unique way I have of teaching the game that I think works pretty well. So, let's begin. Uh, power Grid is a game where the objective is to power cities. Now, in order to power cities, you need three things. The first thing you need are power plants. Power plants take a certain amount of resources and they're capable of powering a certain number of cities. So in this case, this plant requires three coal and then it uses those three coal to power two cities. That's the first thing you need. And the second thing, sort of obvious from that, you need resources to power your plants with. And then finally, you need cities to power. All of this stuff costs money. Powering cities generates you money. So that's sort of how the game goes. Now the game works in three phases, and in each of these phases, you obtain one of those three things that you need in order to power your to power your cities. So the first phase, we get power plants. Power plants work in an auction system. They're auctioned off, and I'm going to explain more detail later. Resources, there's a market down here and the resources have varying costs throughout the course of the game. And then in the third phase of the game, we take turns placing cities on the board. And then there are connection costs depending on where your current network of cities is located and then where you want to expand to. So, let's just go through the game at this point. And if you were teaching the game, this is where I would recommend actually starting to play the game. So the first move, it's very difficult to make a game-ending mistake. And if you see someone buying a plant, like, for example, on the USA map, the number three plant is pretty worthless. So if you see someone trying to buy the three plant, you might correct them. But otherwise, just let them go ahead and play, even though they don't have much of an idea of what they're doing. The decisions they make now are not going to hurt them long term. So actually getting this turn played is really going to help set in the way the mechanics of the game work. All right. So... The first phase of the game is where we auction off the power plants. Now, the auction is not exactly your typical auction. Uh, you're bidding to stay in, and once the, everyone has passed except for one person, the person who is left will gain the plant. So you bid to stay in, and then once everyone has passed, that person wins and they pay their bid. So uh, we'll go in turn order. Blue is first to put up a power plant. And so let's say blue selects one of the plants from the bottom row of the market. You're not allowed to bid on these yet. You, this is just to give you an idea of what's coming next. Let's say blue selects plant number four to bid on. So blue has bid four. Let's say green and purple both pass. And now we have the option to bid on this plant. Four is the minimum bid. Oh, let's go ahead and bid five. So we bid five, blue bid six, and oh, well, that's getting too pricey for us. So we'll pass. Now blue has won the plant for $6. Okay, six dollars, they go in the bank, and blue gets the nice, beautiful number four plant. The four plant requires two coal, and it powers one city. So, now that one plant is gone, we reveal the top plant card from the deck, which is set, which is why it was face up, this 13 plant. So, the lowest four numbered plants will go to the bottom row, and now we have a new plant market to bid on. Blue's already bought a power plant, so we'll flag him out here. And now it's our turn. We'll put one of the bottom four plants up for bid. Well, this seven, let's go ahead and put the seven up for bid. And we'll say that uh, green and purple, they both pass. So we get this plant for seven. Awesome. Pay our money. We have our nice, cool, new power plant. So I'm going to fast forward through the other two turns. Let's say that green gets the eight for, I don't know, $10. And uh, purple will take the nine for nine dollars. So these two are bought. The next two are going to come down. And that's the first part of the game. Everyone now has a power plant that they can use to power their cities. So now that we have a couple of different kinds of power plants, I want to talk about the next phase of the game, which is buying resources. Now you can see here at the bottom there are four different types of resources and each of the four power plant each of the power plants corresponds to different combinations of those types of resources. So for example the plant we have requires 
three oil to power two cities. Now, the coal is a brown cube and the oil is a black cylinder. And if there's any confusion as to which is which, um, just look at the background border of the card here. And this is always the same color as the bit that you're going to be buying. So on these coal plants, for example, the background border is brown and it corresponds to the browned bit. So I know coal isn't always brown in real life, but that's how I remember it. Uh, there are a couple other different kinds of plants. Uh, there are garbage plants with the yellow border. This one takes one garbage to power one city. There are hybrid power plants with the dual colored border. This one, for example, takes one coal or one oil to power four cities. Wow, this plant is way better. It's got a higher number, so we might not see it till later, but you know, these starting plants, just something to get us off the ground. If, for example, you have a hybrid plant that requires more than one resource, you're allowed to mix and match. One coal and one oil will power this one city just fine. There are nuclear power plants. If I can find one. There are nuclear power plants with the red background that require the red uranium tokens, or I just call them nukes. Uh, this one takes one nuke to power six cities. There's a fourth type of resource, and there are also green plants. Green plants, this is a wind plant, requires no resources and it powers the city for free. Now this is usually more expensive and they usually don't provide the throughput that you need, but hey, yeah, a city for free is pretty nice. So, in this phase of the game, uh, we'll go ahead and buy our resources. And I usually gloss over the fact that turn order does change here, because it doesn't really aid the new player very much in making their decisions. But, one nice thing to note is that we go in reverse turn order, so the person who's losing the game, who's losing the game, will get first pick at resources, and therefore they'll get the best prices. So, blue gets to buy resources first. Let's say he chooses to buy up to his capacity. He's got the two coal for one plant, two coal for one city power plant. So he can buy as much as four coal. You can buy up to twice what your plants require. You can buy enough resources for two turns. So you can buy up to four coal, and since, hey, you're not going to get a better price on coal than this, let's say he decides to buy the four coal. So the four coal he buys, the first three of them cost a dollar because they're in the dollar box. The second box here is the two dollar box. So this next coal costs two dollars. So it's a total of three and two. It's a five dollars for the four coal. So he pays his money. We're up next. Uh, we need three oil. Um, if a new player tries to buy more, advise them against it. Usually the oil is pretty consistent and you might get it down here for discount oil. So here we'll just buy three oil for three apiece, nine dollars. And we'll just fast, up, fast forward over this section where our opponents buy their resources in, oil in order. Here uh, that guy buys three coal for seven and here this guy buys one oil for four dollars. All right. So that was the second phase of the game. We've got our plants, we've got our resources, now we need our cities. Buying cities works similarly to buying resources in that the person who's in last place gets to place their cities first. And as I explain the mechanics of how that works, you'll realize why that's probably an advantage. So here's the map. The map changes in every game. Since there's only four players in this game, we block out a certain number of regions of the map to keep it balanced. But uh, you use these house markers to place your cities. So let's say Blue places a house marker, oh, St. Louis, and he pays $10 for his first city. Pay $10. We have a little track up at the top here to keep track of how many cities everyone has built, just to keep things easy to read. So. Now it's our turn to buy cities. Our first city costs $10, and then every city afterward costs $10 to build, but you also have to pay your connection back to your existing network. So say I bought Oklahoma City here for $10. If I wanted to buy Dallas, I would need to pay this $3 connection cost on top of my $10 in order to build the city. So if I build these two, it would cost me a total of $23. Now, there's no rule that says I have to build immediately adjacent to where I am. If I wanted to, I could build down here in Houston. I could pay the three plus the five to get there. And that would cost me 18 for this, 10 for this, $28 total. 
There's no rule saying you can't do that. And a lot of times, if some jerk bag decides to come in and build around me and I want to go this way, well, I can jump over him. There's nothing saying I can't do that. So you can sort of block people when you're bu building cities, but you can't completely block them in. You can just make it more expensive for them to go over you. So, for this example, we'll just build our two cities for $23. And our opponents will go ahead and build their networks as well. Let's say Green wants to go out here, Boise and Salt Lake City. And Purple will just build one city. Oh, let's say Los Angeles for $10. Now, different people build different numbers of cities. Why is that? Well, we're building what we can power. We can power two cities, so we want to build two cities. Purple, even though he got a really nice plan, it only powers one city, so he's only going to buy one city. And there's a reason for that. The reason being, remember how I pointed out that turn order affects it gives the people in last place an advantage. So it affects, it affects you in every phase of the game. Buying power plants, buying resources, and building cities. You want to be in last place, well, I mean, you want to win the game, obviously, but if you're not at the end of the game and about to win, you want to be in last place. Because you'll get resources for cheaper, you'll have an advantage due to the way the auction system works in having, having to have more flexibility. And then also, buying cities, you'll be able to rush cities and you might get cheaper connections as a result or better board position. So, the way turn order is determined is by the number of cities that people have built. That's a metric power grid uses to determine who's winning in a game. So, if you're not going to get money from powering more cities, you rarely want to build extra cities that you can't power because you'll probably suffer in the turn order for it without getting any benefit, like making more money from powering more cities. So, once we've all built our cities, this, we enter what's called the bureaucracy phase. Um, if you're teaching a new person the game, I would, I would advise telling them that bureaucracy phase is where you just power your cities and you get paid for it. A bunch of other stuff happens, but there's no reason to bog a new player down with all of those details at the moment. So, we've got our three oil, we'll go ahead and burn it put it back into the supply, or, uh, well, oil, I guess, that belongs in the Gulf, right? So, so we'll just put that there. Anyway, uh, everyone burns their resources, and then you get paid a certain amount based on how many cities you've powered this turn. And that's according to this payment chart. Everyone will have one of these in front of them, and your new player can look at it whenever he wants. We power two cities, we get $33 for it. $33 bucks goes into our bank, and then we're done. Everyone else will get paid an appropriate amount as well. And eventually some resources will come back into the market. But we're going to try and fast forward through this as much as we can. And that's Power Grid. That's a turn of Power Grid. So, now that we've introduced our new player to walking through the mechanics of each of the three steps, We'll start the next turn of the game, and th at this point it's a good idea to point out this is when turn order changes. So the people who have two cities, red and green, will go first and second, and then the one city people will go third and fourth, and then this is a good time to mention that tiebreaker is determined by highest single numbered power plant. So of the people who have two cities, green and red, green's got the eight, red has the seven, so green is winning. So green gets to go first and then a similar thing for purple and blue. So turn order is determined immediately after building cities, and well, I'm getting paid for it. And then you want to have less cities, and also having worse power plants helps you in the turn order. These are all things to consider when you're thinking about turn order. So at this point, you can go through the next two or three turns of the game, and you can just play them out. You can always buy cities and expand your network for 10 plus connection. You're going to be buying more power plants, However, this 13 plant is going to drop. The 13 plant gives you one city for free. And I think it's at this point it's important to remind the new players a rule that well, we haven't explained yet. This is a good time to explain it. They'll see the 13 drop down and they're like, wait a second. That's one city for free for the rest of the game. This plant is worth way more than $13. Think
think about all the resources I don't have to buy. Well, it's not that simple. You have to remind them of the rule at this point, saying, well, you can only keep three plants at one time. So once I have three power plants, and I've bought my fourth, I have to immediately destroy one of them, and it's gone from the, from the game forever. That's why these introductory plants that power just one and two cities are really not so good, because the eventual end goal of the game, in the case of a four-player game, is to power 17 cities using only three plants to do it. You're going to need more than just one and two to get there. And while this one free city is nice, you're going to have to get rid of it for a plant that, re that is able to power more cities. So just remind them of that, and if they start bidding more than, I don't know, 17 or $18 for it, say, now may be the time to tone it back a little bit. <laughs> All right, so we fast forwarded a few turns in the game. And everyone's got quite a few cities on the board here, and it's about time for our new player to build cities once again. Now, once the board gets to be roughly about here, and our new player says, well, wait a second, we're all running out of room. No one's ever going to get to 17 cities at this rate. This is a good time to point out the rules for step two, now that they've gotten accustomed to a few turns of the normal game. So, what happens with step two? Well, first of all, step two is triggered when the first player builds their seventh city. So, when they're about to build their seventh city, may also be a good time, if they haven't asked already, to talk about what happens in step two. Now, a few things change in step two. The first thing that changes is a couple of things with the power plant market, some crappy plants are destroyed, etc. And uh, the, the re resources will come back at a little bit higher pace. But also, the important part about step two is that you can now build the cities where other people already are. So if they've looked closely at these cities, they'll notice there are spaces for 10, 15, and 20. You can say, now you're allowed to build the 15 cost cities. So you can say, now if you build where someone already is, it's 15 plus connection instead of 10 plus connection like we've been paying all game. Now you want to get there first, because you can still build the 10 costs where no one else is, but if someone's beat you there, well, there's a second place prize. You still get the city, you just got to pay five more dollars for it. It's also important to explain that you can't build a second city where you already are, because that's going to be the first inclination. Oh, well, I'll just build where I already am. No connection costs. Well, that's not allowed. You have to build in cities where you aren't already. So that's an important thing to explain at this point. Also, they'll ask, well, what about the 20 cost cities? Well, the 20 cost cities are for step three, and step three happens when we get to a certain plant in the deck. There's a card that says step three, and then when step three happens, resource refresh rates will change again. You're allowed to build in the 20 cost cities. And then this whole top row only thing for the power plant market, that goes away and you can bid on whatever you see. And there will be some nice juicy power plants that will come up when that happens. Because we've been saving them all game, of course glossing over it, but you know, we're always putting the top plant on the bottom of the deck so that all the great plants will come out in step three very rapidly. So. This is enough of an explanation to get a new player through the game, and you don't have to waste that much time before the game starts explaining the mechanics of the game. I found it's a lot easier for things to sink in as if you explain them while you're playing. And Power Grid is unique in that it's a game where if you don't know all the rules when you start, you're not screwed. And there's, there's only maybe one or two times over the course of a game, if at all, where you have to say to a new player, don't do this. Trust me, just don't do it. Usually that doesn't happen, and you'll find they're making decisions on their own, and they're actually playing at a pretty high level. I've seen new players win games their first time playing, which is great for keeping them coming back. So, that's about it for the basic beginner's tutorial of Power Grid. Uh, I hope you'll check out the blog that will be linked to in the description. There will be articles posted there. If you're uh, coming, there, coming here to this video from there, well, thanks. I hope you enjoy it, and uh, leave me lots of comments and let me know how I can answer more questions or if you've got things you want to hear about related to strategy and power grade.